When the Fokker Wolf 190 made its maiden flight in June 1939, it was undoubtedly the most advanced combat airplane in the world. Heavy firepower and a staggering level of performance gave this small radial-engined machine the potential to outclass every contemporary Allied fighter. When it entered service in 1941, it was immediately successful, inflicting such heavy losses on its opponents that it soon became known as the Butcher Bird. During a career that lasted for four years, the FW-190 served in every German theater of war from North Africa to Russia. It became the Luftwaffe's second most numerous frontline aircraft and one of the most successful fighters of the era. It proved to be so versatile that it could perform equally well in a variety of roles and by the end of the war, nearly 20,000 examples had been built. In addition to numerous fighter and fighter bomber variants, other versions appeared as ground attack aircraft, torpedo fighters, night fighters, trainers, and reconnaissance machines. By 1945, the Fokker Wolf 190 had earned the respect of German and Allied airmen alike. Many considered it to be the finest piston-engined aircraft to enter service with the Luftwaffe. And unlike the BF-109, which had long since exceeded its development potential, Kurt Tank's masterpiece remained a formidable opponent for all but the best of Allied fighters. In September 1931, Fokker Wolf merged with the old Albatross company and gained the expertise of one of its most skillful engineers, R. Blazer. November of the same year saw the arrival of the Bremen plant of the highly talented Kurt Tank. Trained as an electrical engineer, but with more than 20 years' experience in aeronautics, Tank was appointed as the new chief of design. Meanwhile, Heinrich Fokker had become deeply interested in the development of helicopters. In 1932, he resigned from the board of directors and left to start his own company, Fokker Archgelis. Hitler's rise to power in 1933 heralded a complete transformation of Germany's aviation industry. Kurt Tank became a driving force, and with a first-class design team already in place, Fokker Wolf were awarded a string of development orders by the new German Air Ministry, the RLM. The new machine was a cantilever monoplane design with a robust wide-track undercarriage and an air-cooled radial engine. Detailed work began in 1938, and by the middle of the year, Fokker Wolf had managed to secure a development contract with the Air Ministry's technical office. For the next 12 months, Blazer's design team worked exclusively on the project, and by the following summer, they had completed the first FW-190 prototype. Designated as the V-1, it made its maiden flight at Bremen on the 1st of June 1939. Flying characteristics proved to be extremely impressive, with good stability, outstanding roll and dive rates, and light, responsive handling. By the end of the year, the RLM had placed a large order for more than 400 machines. Other orders followed, and before long, demand had exceeded the capacity of the Fokker Wolf factories. Under Air Ministry instructions, Arado, Fiesler and AGO were all assigned to build the aircraft under license. The production rate was swiftly increased, and by the spring of 1942, it had reached the level of 250 machines a month. First deliveries went to JG-26, and within a few weeks, the wing had three 190 groups fully operational. 
their appearance in the skies over the Channel Coast area came as a complete surprise to the RAF. The Fokker Wolf completely outclassed the Spitfire Mark V, and after scoring several notable successes, it became known to its opponents as the Butcher Bird. April 1942, JG-2 became the Luftwaffe's second fully operational Fokker Wolf wing. For the next four months, this aircraft dominated the Western Front, and as British losses rose, the RAF became increasingly alarmed. Using fighter bomber variants of the FW-190, JG-2 and JG-26 carried out successful hit-and-run raids against targets in Britain. Sixteen field conversion sets were available for the Fokker Wolf. They enabled it to carry a wide range of specialized armament or equipment. Known as a Rustatz, each set contained a different package, identified by its own individual R number. R1 consisted of two 50 kilogram underwing bomb racks, while R2 and R3 comprised a pair of Mark 108 or Mark 103 underwing cannon but the R6 set was specifically designed for use against bombers. Consisting of two 8-inch rocket projectors mounted underneath the wings, it was used to great effect against the American B-17 flying fortresses. By 1943, the American daylight bombing campaign was increasing in intensity, and many 190 units were withdrawn from other theaters to cope with the threat to Germany. The B-series prototypes used a GM-1 power booster, while the C-series machines were fitted with a turbo-supercharged Daimler-Benz engine. Both types incorporated a pressurized cockpit, but neither of them proved to be reliable enough to go into full-scale production. Kurt Tank solved the problem in a different way. The Junkers Ju-88 was a versatile bomber that used several different engines, amongst them the Yumo 213. Round in shape, it looked similar to the radial engine, but was in fact a V-12 inline engine with a circular radiator behind the propeller. Unlike the Daimler-Benz, the Yumo engine was in plentiful supply, and in a bold move, Tank arranged for this engine to be fitted to the 190. With this combination of a bomber engine fitted to a fighter, Fokker Wolf started to develop what might well have been the best fighter of World War II. In order to balance the aircraft, the rear fuselage was lengthened by four and a half feet, and a larger tail fin was fitted. When the prototype made its maiden flight at Langenhagen in May 1944, it was an instant success. With a top speed of 685 kilometers per hour, it was faster than all other 190s at any height. It had a better rate of climb, greater acceleration, and a significantly higher service ceiling. In an emergency situation, the MW50 water methanol injection system could boost power output by almost 30%. Overall, the new variant was a vast improvement over its predecessors. Production began at Fokker Wolf's Cottbus factory, and within a few weeks, the first machines were being delivered to JG-54 and JG-26. Before long, operational pilots were hailing the 190D as the best piston engine fighter ever to enter service with the Luftwaffe. But as the year progressed, the odds facing the German fighter units were overwhelming 